Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 13 preview between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers on offense love to run the counter play, and I think if they run a play action pass off that same counter action, it could generate a big play in the passing game this week versus the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to show you exactly how they can make this happen. So we have a tight condensed bunch set. We're going to fake the counter this way. So we have the running back taking his counter step and coming back this way, faking that counter. And what we're going to do, we're going to get Ben Roethlisberger faking the counter, coming downhill, setting up on the outside leg of the tackle, and we're pulling the backside guard because he's uncovered, pulling him around as a lead defender. Again, showing that counter action, but we're actually faking the counter. So now Ben Roethlisberger setting up back here, deep down, uh, deep in the pocket. We're gonna send a big, big play deep downfield. So what we're gonna do, the guy at the top of this cluster set, we're gonna send him pushing up 15 yards at the free safety, and he's breaking across the field. On the back side, we have the tight end showing block with the outside backer trying to get him influence. Then he's pushing up and running the curl. Because on the outside of him, we're sending another wide receiver up at the safety just in front of him and running a 12 yard in route. So now you have 15, you have 12. You're creating the, the area over the middle of the field. You're trying to occupy the middle because you're trying to hit a big play downfield with the receiver running on the outside going up. So now you see where Ben Roethlisberger has options. He has a tight end, or the start of the receiver coming in over the crosser on a deep in route or dig route. And we also have the big play deep down the field off of play action. We know Ben Roethlisberger is gonna read this first, then he's gonna come here, and he has a protection with the pulling guard coming around. So I think off of their patented counter action, they can have a big play deep down the field, whether it be intermediate with the receiver coming over on the dig route or the receiver going deep down the field on the streak. So again, running that counter action, running that counter to perfection versus the Ravens could ultimately lead to them hitting a big play downfield with the passing game. The Baltimore Ravens can have some success throwing the football versus the Pittsburgh Steelers if they create some confusion in the secondary. And I'm gonna show you how they can accomplish that with motion and also with the speed out. I'm gonna show you right here what we're talking about. We have condensed set, I'm sorry, spread set. We have two receivers along the same side as the tight end. We're trying to isolate the strong safety and the corner. We're trying to put these guys in a situation where they're gonna to have to communicate the effectiveness in order to slow down this play. It's a play action pass, so you just stop, fake the play action right here on the backside, running this guy up and out. And what we're gonna do with the tight end, we're gonna have him take an inside stem, push up the field, and if he sees his linebacker dropping into the zone, then he's gonna break over the middle. If he sees this guy trying to run with him, man up, then he's breaking to the corner. I'm sorry, to the post. So he has he has to read on the fly. So that's why you want him to take that inside track so that way he can easily uh, figure out what this linebacker is gonna to do to him on the inside. Now, also pre-snap, we're gonna put this guy in motion, bring him back out, just outside of the tackle, in between where he, where he originally was aligned, we're gonna send this guy easily on the speed out. So now we're gonna to have to hope that the strong safety and the corner communicate effectively or don't communicate effectively because we're gonna send this inside receiver, or sorry, the outside receiver up as if he's going in and then pushing vertical. Why? Because now this corner and this strong safety are probably gonna miscommunicate, play this wrong, and you can either hit a big play right here or a big play with the speed out. So that's why you're trying to force these guys to have poor communication in the secondary. You want the corner to chase, you want the strong safety to try to get there as well. Meanwhile, they may run into each other. They may have to climb over top to get to where he needs to be. Either way, it creates that natural bubble, that natural space that's needed for a big play to happen, whether it be short or deep. So I think that's how if they cause some miscommunication in the secondary, the Ravens can't have some success this week throwing the ball versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game for Pittsburgh. I will look at putting Emmanuel Sanders and Antonio Brown on the same side. That's a great way to get Baltimore to tip their coverage hand and also an excellent way to isolate Heath Miller on the back side. And the linebackers in coverage will have to play a huge role. They're going to have to protect the middle of the field. Baltimore runs a lot of crossers, a lot of digs, a lot of in routes. So those linebackers in coverage will play a huge role in the outcome of this ball game. And getting Le'Veon Bell on the perimeter is going to be key. Bigger backs on toss plays and counters do a great job in setting up their blockers. They plant their foot and get downhill quickly. I think that's how the Steelers can have success running the ball. 
And for the Ravens, they're going to have to get a hand on that slot receiver. That's usually the Steelers takeoff guy. So you have to disrupt that timing and not allow him to get downfield quickly. And you want to protect inside out in the passing game. That's actually what you're supposed to do as an offensive lineman. Protect your inside threat first. You don't want to get caught chasing guys that are coming on the outside. Allow Joe Flacco to step up into the pocket. And that way he can complete passes downfield. And I would also utilize the tight ends as extra blockers in the running game. Keep them on the move to get better angles to generate those big plays on the ground. Now here are some in-game adjustments that you want to watch out for in this ball game for Pittsburgh. How long do the Steelers go with the single high safety? Do they trust their cornerbacks enough on the outside to match up one-on-one -on -one with these Raven wide receivers so that way they can then dedicate Troy Palomalu in the box to be an extra defender versus the run as well as be a factor in the short to intermediate coverage area. And who gets the gadget play? We know the Steelers run at least one gadget play per game whether it's an end around, jet sweep, or flea flicker. Who, when, and where is what you want to keep an eye on. And do they stay in a traditional 3-4 defense or go to a situational 3-3-5 look to get an extra safety on the field and use Palomalo as more of a linebacker rover type player this week versus Baltimore? And for Baltimore, do the Ravens go with more power and ISO this week? The best way to stop pressure is to run right at it, and there's natural bubbles in the 3-4 defense, so going downhill, in my opinion, will be the best bet versus the Steelers' defense. And Baltimore has to get creative with their personnel, i.e. the tight ends, to create space for Torrey Smith to be able to get vertical in the passing game. So it'll be interesting to see how well they utilize formations to try to create those opportunities for Smith to utilize his speed. And do they go to a situational bear front to take advantage of the interior offensive line of Pittsburgh? I think that's a battle the Ravens can definitely win up front. The X Factor in this game for the Steelers will be cornerback Ike Taylor. He's going to be matched up one-on-one -on -one versus Torrey Smith. That's a battle he's going to have to win more often than not. That's their deep threat, take away their number one option, and force Flacco to find other targets. And the X Factor for the Ravens will be Ray Rice, the receiver. I think he can have some success catching the ball out of the backfield, and that can also loosen things up in that box so that way he can run the football. So utilizing him as a receiver could be the way the Ravens can have some success versus Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh in this ball game. I think their offense is finally starting to hit their stride. I think their passing game will have some success versus that Ravens secondary. And on defense, I look at where they can have some success is stopping the run. I think they'll do a great job up front maintaining the line of scrimmage and not allowing those guards to get to the second level. So I like Pittsburgh to win this one on the road. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Steeler fan forums and Raven fan forums for always showing football game plan support.